This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Michigan Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Hi, this is Sandy with Silent Voices. We're so glad that you came tonight. We're filming today at WKTV Studio in Wyoming, Michigan. We have special guests with us tonight. We have Scott and Tracy Bush from Sparta and their family, and we're here to interview them and tell the horror story that they had with CPS. Okay, Mr. Bush. Yes, uh, to start off with, um, our problem started right off the bat from the beginning. Um, we made a mistake. Our mistake was asking the state of Michigan for any form of help. Uh, we are people who are always uh, very proactive in um, parenting, looking for different things to help parent, different ideas and such. and. Um, Unfortunately, uh, we asked the state of Michigan for some ideas and some help. We uh, got ourselves all set up with a program through uh, DHS and thought we were going to receive some good quality help. Unfortunately, this help that we received was anything but help. Everything that we um, went through was a nightmare from the beginning. Um, they, first and foremost, uh, was to take the power out of the parents' hands. May I ask you, Scott, what kind of help were you searching for? Well, our, our kids were teenagers, so they you know, started exhibiting some of that teenage, um, teenage angst or behavioral issues going on, um, listening to other children in schools and all this music and everything that goes around. So they started exhibiting things that weren't appropriate. We are faith-based in our family, and we believe in the... Uh, in the you know the the Lord and Jesus Christ, and we thought maybe there would be some ideas that might be able to help us. But um, you know, quite honestly, what they did was brought destruction to my family, absolute utter destruction. Everything that they brought into my family was to take every bit of power from the parents and put it into the children. Um, uh, we had a caseworker who decided that she was going to report because she was at the end of her uh, case so she decided to report this into CPS to keep services going. Well when they brought services in this lady came into our home her name was Kay Bailinga. She walked into our home and the first thing she said to our family with our children around and everybody was um, don't Beep with me. Don't mess around because I am your worst nightmare. Uh, I will absolutely ruin you as a family. Um, we will take, take you down. We will take your children. Um, I am the queen, you know what. Um, so don't mess around with me. So she was threatening you right off the bat. Right off the bat, she threatened okay. us. And let you know that she was in control and she was boss. Oh, she was the boss, the applesauce, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, which obviously right then and there my whole family was frightened. We were all scared. My kids were crying. Uh, my, my baby was running up to me crying about not wanting to get taken away or whatever. And she brought up this wonderful idea. Well, if you do everything and follow these rules and take these classes and do all this stuff, life's going to be wonderful for you and your family. Well, as we started taking these classes and everything, and things were all wonderful and hunky-dory, um, they just took our children. And Why, What was their excuse for taking them, Scott? Their excuse for taking our children were many different. I will bring you the allegations. 
their allegations that they brought against us were honestly silly. Um, Lies. She, uh, <laughs> she brought up a situation where she said one of the caseworkers walked into our home and said that my whole family was sitting around our kitchen table discussing a suicide letter that my wife had wrote, a four-page suicide letter, and we were all pointing fingers at each other, blaming each other, that if Tracy dies, it's because of the kids, or if, uh, if, if she does die, you know, it's my fault, this and that, and all kinds of just absolute, lies. unbelievable lies. Just l unbelievable lies. Um, there was an allegation of a caseworker who w came to our home for one day, for one hour. She walked into my home and she'd left. No harm done as we thought. Come to find out she had wrote in a letter that me and Tracy had told her that we lock our, our son, our three-year-old son, into a dark room. We were shocked. We said, what's a dark room? She went and explained a dark room was where we supposedly take our son, put him into some room, turn the lights off, and lock the door on him. That was another lie. There was, she walked, uh, the, the, the caseworker who first drove into my driveway. I was working on my home, doing some remodeling. I had tools out in my driveway. The caseworker got out, walked up to me, and said, what is this? I said, tools. She goes, why are they sitting here? I said, well, when you pulled up, you saw me cutting a piece of wood. She said to me, it doesn't belong there. You need to wrap everything up when you're done with it each time, and you need to go put it into your shed or garage. And I said, but I'm cutting continuously and nonstop all day long. She said, absolutely not. You will wrap that saw each time. You will take it 50 yards to your shed. You will put it in your shed. And when you need, to need it again, you can bring it out and use it. So she right away had control, she thought, over what you should and shouldn't do with your life. Right then and there. Mm -hmm. She proceeded to walk into my home. And she said, what is this stuff here? Tracy responded with, it's spring, summertime. We have boxes that we're bringing in from our shed, which are summer clothes, and we're getting rid of our winter clothes. She said, it doesn't belong here. It's cluttered in this house. It doesn't need to be there. So she brought up a problem about that. So we proceeded to take it to my shed just to appease her. We went to my shed. I opened up the doors to my shed, and she says, what's this? I said, a shed. No, what's this in it? I said, I've got a lawnmower, I've got boxes, I've got tools, I've got everything that belongs into a shed. This is too much. I said, what do you mean too much? You have way too much stuff. She said, I want you to get rid of those clothes you have in there. You do not need that many clothes. You do not need this much clutter in your home or in your shed. This is not right. So she proceeded to tell Tracy directly that she needed to get rid of these clothes or they were going to do it. So let me get this right, Scott. She actually came into your home and told you what amount of clothes you could and could not have and where they need to be packed and how they need to be packed away. Absolutely and directly. What was her name? Do you remember? Her name was Kay Bilinga. Say that again. Kay Bilinga. Kay Bilinga. Okay. Yes. All right. Go ahead. Um, and there was other scenarios. Um, she walked into my home. And of course, she did probably the, the typical CPS DHS thing. She took her finger and right, wiped it across my counters and so on and so forth and looked at it and gave me a, a, a snooty whatever form of type of luck and uh, pointed to my dishes that were in my um, sink and, well, what is this? Dishes. Why are they here? That's where dishes belong. No, they need to be cleaned up and put away. I said, I have five children. We eat. We, five children, have a bowl, have a spoon, have a fork, have a cup, so on and so forth. We just haven't done it yet. We do it three times a day. You just happen to walk in. Well, this doesn't need to be. 
and proceeded to take a picture of it. He tried to make it look like we do not do our dishes. Well, then she proceeds to just dance through my house and walk through my house and look at it and give this look of um, um, that we are um, um, second class, that we are um, not up to her level. So she looked at um, the area that I was working on and she said, well, what is this? I said, that's a hole in the wall. Um, I'm fixing that right now. You just seen me fixing it. So she proceeded to take a picture of that and turn that into an issue. Um, she also um, made us fix the house made, yeah, 28 days. Right. We, we were in the process of working on our, our home as far as um, we just got done getting what they call a modification loan on my home. And we were talking about that and she knew where we were at. We just got all that set up and everything. Before she left, she told me, you have 28 days to have this home in absolute tip-top shape, and if I come back on the 28th day, this home is not up to expectations or specs. I'm pulling your children out. Well, me, I just started unemployment, so we weren't full of money. We just got a modification on our home, so life was starting to come back together for us as a family, financially, and so on and so forth. So she threw this extra strain on me and started pointing out everything that I needed to get done. Well, by the time I was done, it put me behind on my bills. It put me behind again on my house payment because our first whole entire thing was, we love our children. We are gonna do anything and everything it is to save our children and do whatever. So I took all funds that I had within the bank and whatever I made on my unemployment and I put it into getting in this house done, which in return now put me into debt and put me into a situation with my home and electric bills and so on and so forth without any help. So in other words, Scott, a woman that you thought was coming to help you actually created chaos in your own home. She destroyed my home in she every destroyed your aspect home. of it. She okay. absolutely wiped everything from me. She okay. tried to wipe out every bit that I had mm -hmm. in every area from um, so mentally all the way down. Um, there, there was stories I can go on and on in which I will hear. Um, we went through this program, we went to court, and they threw out these allegations, which we denied. We denied the allegations utterly from top down. We absolutely, utterly denied them. They were untrue and false, and I'm a believer in, in Jesus Christ. I believe faith, and I believe in telling the truth. So me and Tracy went into court to tell the truth, to be honest, open, and we went in there and we got absolutely annihilated in court. They did not want to hear what we had to say. They wanted no part of what we had to say. No evidence. The caseworkers, there was no, uh, not one shred of evidence to bring forth against us, but we had evidence stacked a mile high. I have, don't miss and have never missed doctor's appointments for my children. I don't miss dentist appointments for my children. My children were in school. I have never touched my child, not one of them, in any way, shape, or form. I do not do drugs. I do not do alcohol. I do believe in faith in Jesus Christ and in teaching my children in a good, clean manner. I do not have violent video games. I do not have porn or any disgusting movies like that. All of my channels are blocked out and the only way the children get to see um, any forms of movies is if we're checked out by me or Tracy and we review it and then we will punch in numbers. I am very proactive in who my children see and who they're around. I have taught my children about drugs and alcohol and sex and things to look for. I got food. And my children have never gone without food, and we love our children. We've been absolutely rammed from the beginning. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, the CPS and DHS system is absolutely fraudulent in every aspect of it from top to bottom. It is a business where it's about money. All things need to make money. You can have a business and people that work under you without finances coming in. And there's only one way that you can be financed, by taking children. 
or putting people in the position to lose them. Court charges, making these parents who have done nothing wrong pay all these felonious and ridiculous bills, it's all a sham. It is a sham to take people who don't have lots of money, and that's what DHS and CPS is about, is to come into your home, they look at it, they see that you're not rich, and they know they have you right then and there. They know that they can run you through because they're gonna give you a court-appointed attorney who does not care about you, he only cares about getting cases to get paid, and that's all they care about. They wanna destroy, and then they take healthy, wholesome children who are good kids, not perfect, good children, they pull them out of your home, they throw them into three or four foster homes, screw around with their mental, and then put them in positions like my children now have sexual abuse on them because of the foster home they were in. They do not attack the foster homes, but they attack mom and dad. But they don't go after them. My, my daughter wets the bed, never wet her bed in her life. Now she's wetting the bed. She's disturbed. And then they ask questions like, well, your daughter's acting up when she comes to our home after she sees you. Really? Any child is going to act up when you rip them from a loving home, you stick them into a foster home, they come to see you for one hour in a week, and they're gonna go home happy to these people's homes, and they're, they're not. They're a mess, it's ridiculous. It's a joke, it's a sham, it's a scam, and it's about money. And it's about time that our governments and our, our people on the high end, the low end, and our communities come together and fight this. This is ridiculous. I am a good person. I am a good father. I have done no wrong. She is an excellent mother. She has loved her children to the fullest extent. Our children are wonderful kids. And we've been wrong. And we're just one of probably hundreds of thousands, if not more. There's even more story I could come up with this. Um, it just, you know, I'm so passionate about it because even t when my children do come home, we are going to carry this beyond this. We are going to go as far as we can. This is just not right to see these families destroyed for these situations, for, for money, for someone's, because they're in some status where they can do that. It is wrong, wrong, wrong. Scott, I want to stop you and I want to get back to your wife in a few minutes. I'd like to interview one of your children. Yeah and ask her how she felt while she was going through this. That's why we have silent voices. That's why we're putting people like you on air because CPS is doing wrong. DHS is doing wrong. And there are times when children do need to be uh, removed from the home, but statistically we have found that uh, children, uh, children's deaths are five times higher in foster care than they are in their own parents' home. Absolutely. And yet the foster, uh, the CPS keeps taking children out of um, parents' home. Nicole, would you like to say something for a little bit? Okay, you go right ahead. I'm gonna give you the mic. Um, I just wanna say that being in foster care, you feel alone, you don't feel safe or protected, you have nobody, you're going into homes, and you don't even know the family, and they expect you to just to have just a fun time being there. Uh, you, you, you have to go on day by day, just like you would at your parents' house, and you're taken from all that. They, they, they just rip the family right from under your feet. You don't have any say-so. You, like, you, you don't have a voice. Your voice doesn't matter to no one. As long as they get their money, as long as they get you know, the satisfaction that a kid's taken, you know, their finances, they get their house paid for. They have all these new cars and all these cars, all these houses, all everything is, is money from, from kids being taken from their parents. It's like my, like my dad has said, it's a business. They don't care about anyone's feelings or nothing. As long as they make their money, life is good for them. There's many kids, me being in foster care, I know many kids that have so many emotional problems and physical problems and there's suicide there's cutting themselves they they don't want to be alive they they're all alone they have no one there for them if you say anything wrong if you mess anything up it's your family's gone 
my little brother and my little sister are going through so much stuff and it's because they're little and you know little kids they get their parents you know gone the little kids get adopted out and they get money till they till they're 18. teenagers they don't want the teenagers they, they just they treat them how they treat them and then leave them and to get services for all this stuff all this emotional stuff you get you go through all this and they expect you to pay for it all they cause the the emotional stress they cause the hurt and the loneliness and the bad thoughts and all that they cause all that but they get but we have to pay for it because they get their money for what they want little kids teenagers everyone's suffering parents back home the house is empty there's nothing there you know it's you wake up and you're in you don't even know where you are you don't even know how safe you are teenagers do you feel like you've been traumatized by what's going on in your life yeah i do okay i do mm -hmm. and it, is it going to be hard to actually give that over to the lord and trying to do that i'm doing the best i can it's definitely really hard because you and your feelings are get all mixed up after everything's taken away you have nothing there you know you feeling your feelings you don't know even know what you feel anymore you know you don't know if you're angry you don't know if you're hurt or what it is and then you don't know what to do with it all what about your schoolwork did it affect your schooling um i was able to keep my grades up pretty good um i had to think of it as a positive you know thing i got to bring my reports to my parents and show them that even though in this situation I'm still doing something positive and then I can come home and I can say I got through it and I can go and I can help other people through it. There's a lot, a lot of many kids that I could talk to. I could help and I can talk to them one-on-one -on -one because I know what they go through. There is caseworkers, false friends, and they say we understand how you are. We understand what you feel and they really don't. No one will ever understand it unless they're in the same situation. They, they can try to help you out as much as they can and much as they want. But it, it, it doesn't help. Once you go through this situation, even if it was for a week or, or 10 years, everything's messed up. Your, your, your feelings, you know, one day you're hurt, the next day you're happy. And kids not knowing, you know, if they're ever going to see mom and dad again, they, they have all these questions and none of them are being answered because no one knows. Okay, Brianna, or um, Nicole, I hate to stop you, but could you let Brianna... Um, tell a little bit. Um, Brianna is a friend of the family, right? Yep. Who's grown up with the family. And let's just hear a couple minutes, okay? Because we don't have much time left. So. I've been a family friend of this family since first grade. I've been there weekends, weekdays, school days, summer. I've always seen this family be very good to their kids. I've never seen anything like this, and they don't deserve this. It's okay. That's why we're putting you on air, because um, silent voices need to expose what this big demon is that we call CPS. Okay. They've always took really care, good care of their kids. They've always had food. They never suffered. They were always there. They always showed them that they cared. Okay. Young man, would you like to say anything? No? Okay. Tracy, are you able to talk? Would you like to say something now? I just want my kids back. Just want your kids back. So mom can be there to heal them. So mom can be there to heal them. That's right. Yeah, to take care of what CPS has created. It created a lifelong problem now with our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's utterly ridiculous. It doesn't have to be. That's right. It doesn't have to be. Everything's got to stop. You know, there, there's so much more that can be done. Yes. Even before something like that, it, it has to happen no matter what. Amen. You know, I'd like to say um, here at Silent Voices, we like to bring people on the air. This is a family that's been tore apart by CPS. This is a family who was asking for help, and instead of giving help, CPS created chaos. CPS tore the family apart. CPS have, have these children now who have been traumatized. Now they need to get their life right back together because CPS came in and tore this family apart. I want to tell you, if you're having problems in your home, please call 
Um, Dennis Lawrence, the number will be up on your screen. Call Silent Voices. That's what you're here for, Silent Voices. And remember that you can make a difference in people's lives. This family is fighting to get their family back together. Jeff, uh, excuse me, not Jeff. Um, Scott, can you tell me, please, you have two children still in CPS, right? Yes. Okay. How is that coming? Can you give me one minute of what's happening? Uh, right now, at this point in time, they're going to do an assessment down at the assessment center to find out who and which one, if not both, were sexually uh, molested, touched, and so on and so forth from the first foster home that they were in. So we but know where it happened. had already told okay. them four months ago that it had happened, but they did not want to believe the parents because they want to say you're vengeful, even though we know our children. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now six months later, it's coming out. And the problem with that is, let me say this, six months later when that comes out, everybody's name in the world is going to come out and you're never going to know. Mm -hmm. And now we're even afraid that they're trying to put my other two sons' names involved with it. Mm -hmm. okay. And I know my Accusing son's... Accusing them, you mean? Yes. Of course, because they're yes. not going to go after the foster exactly. parents because they're a state. Mm -hmm. And they've been sued. They're going to pull everybody in the world. They're going to pull every child for anything. Mm -hmm. And if anybody ever wants to read it, they should read what neglect means and how broad it is. I could mm -hmm. walk into every home in America and pull your child for what they call neglect. Mm -hmm. I could walk into every single home and your child is gone. So beware. 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 That's a good thing. Beware. We thank you so much for tuning in. And remember that um, you can call us at Silent Voices. Dennis will have his number up. You're welcome to come to the studio uh, when we shoot. He'll have his email address up where you can reach him. Uh, you can come live on the TV program and tell your story. Like this family has told the heartbreaking story that they have gone through when they picked up the phone and asked CPS for help. They ended up being victims of what actually goes on in CPS. It's all about money. It's all about having your children taken away so the federal government will give them more money. We thank you so much, all of you, for coming on today. I know this is very hard for you, but I want you to understand, and I know you do, people have to keep telling their story in order for CPS to be stood up. We went to Lansing a couple weeks ago. We told our stories in Lansing. We'll go again if we need to go of what is happening with this demon we call CPS. Remember, only you can make a difference. You you can call in, you can tell your story, and you can make a difference in people's lives. Thank you so much for contacting and watching the station today. Thank you, um, Scott and Tracy, for coming down, and, and the rest of you for coming down. And remember, only you can make a difference.